All right. Well, Catapult is definitely a target of interest for the short sellers, the usual suspects. Uh, it is getting the initial AMC treatment. Uh, I have personally consolidated my positions, the ones that I had that expired on the 17th, um, except for the ones that I have at $5 that are green. Um, <coughs> everything has been consolidated and pushed out to October and January, because um, I'm just not going to worry about it. Uh, I had a, quite a few positions at the 17th um, that went down due to, yeah, I didn't like yesterday's volume disappearance. I didn't like the Thanos snap that happened and volume just <laughs> disappeared. So consolidating only a couple strikes that I'm going to play and uh, I'm just going to, I'm, I'm going to cover this obviously still, but I'm not playing it like I was. I, you know, I was anticipating uh, a slow, steady growth up over the next couple weeks until retail came in. But then seeing what happened at 750, considering the fact there's 20,000 contracts that expire next Friday and how they attacked it today, this week, on Tuesday, um, this is going to be a battle. It's going to be a bloody battle. It's most likely going to take place between 550 and 650, most likely. Um, I know they will allow it to go up to 750, but I think we're going to see a lot of shorting. And then some little returns from their lower positions. And then new shorts again. Little returns from their lower positions. Big shorts. Little returns from their lower positions. And then now, you know, all these shorts are still in the money that they took here. And then they'll end up shorting down to a certain percentage. And then start returning more shorts. Um, even if they go up and above these shorts being taken out, I mean, that's what happened to AMC. That's how AMC ended up staying at, uh, $30 forever in between 30 and 35 because they slowly worked it down and returned older, closed out older short positions. Um, and then that's what happens. That's why it's stair stepping up now because it will eventually, eventually get to a point to where they short and then they return the previous shorts that they took. So it would be like short and then return up to like here. And then these shorts are no longer profitable. Um, and then they'll take out a new short position that pushes it down and then return these shorts while they're in a little bit of profitability and, and just repeat, push it up over where they took the shorts out here that are now not profitable and then take out a new position that makes them profitable. It's just a cycle that they do and it's what they've been doing and they look like they're already poised to start that bullshit in catapult. So we haven't even, they're going to do that before any big movement um still eventually they have to cover the positions no matter what we're still sitting here like the revolutionaries waiting on the french to fucking get here uh, the other retailers to come in and and combat this type of shit so we start seeing you know like the little uh, sideways doji candles of battle for that position um that just looks like that's what's going to happen, and it's accelerated. It's happened much faster than I thought it was going to. I did not think we were going to see 750 until, like, at least next week. Uh, so, you know, they're definitely, they don't want this thing ending up on another gainer list. That's going to bring in day traders. That's going to get more retail interest in it. Um, so I have consolidated my shit and pushed it out to the 15th and January, and then I'm just holding the shares that I do have. Um, this is by no means a YOLO play. It never was a YOLO play. You should always just have a portion of your portfolio attached to it. But I, after seeing what they did yesterday and then the Thanos snap to volume that it just disappeared at the end of the day, uh, I'm not playing short options. I'm just not. I'm not playing those. Sh I mean, that's really the shortest expiration you could get was the 17th of next week, but it ate up a couple hundred dollars with what they did. So fuck that. So I consolidate all those positions and just turn them into a couple, uh, couple bigger positions longer out. So that's how I am playing this now. Um, 
because yeah, I think it's going to get the AMC treatment. We'll see. We'll see some pushes up, um, but they're definitely on any given day going to pull this shit probably every day until they clean up a lot of the three, four dollar short positions that they took. The majority of them are up at you know nine, nine and eight and seven. That's like the majority of them that you saw on the tenth happen. So a lot of their shit's still in profit, but they, they took a bunch out to keep it you know, under four, under five and under four dollars for a while. So they got to get rid of those because I know they are very fearful after seeing the action this has had in a week that more and more retail will end up pouring into this eventually. And that will completely fuck them if they decide to be stupid and hang on to older positions and hope that they can just scare retail out and get it back down to that position. But I, I, I do not foresee that happening. Not after the action this has had. Um, there's definitely people watching it now, like really paying attention to it, but I'm not, you know, I'm just going to sit on it and that's it. Not have to worry about it. Um, unless, you know, it makes some crazy move where I can make money on a day trade. And this is another one that they're just killing, just killing options in this. Like it's, that's where we're at again. It's the, the let's kill the options chain part of their short play and I just nope don't want any part of it um now hopefully if you're trading the way that you know I have suggested that would hypothetically be the best way to trade in short squeeze plays with what we know about these guys and the tactics they use you know you're getting in and getting out <laughs> you know, where you're profitable and hopefully because this is the shit they're doing I mean I'll show you right now um just between these two they're shorting during the day now look at that and instead of returning during the day you know uh, they're going to fucking do this bullshit they'll return in the after hours in the pre-market so that way all the shorting from that day is cleaned and then they get to start fresh shorting down and shit uh, <laughs> so, yeah, this is, I, I just don't trust it. I wanted to get in down here, but they had that bitch down to 17 something. And I just feel like they're trying to sucker people in still. Um, we'll see. Um, yeah, it already looks like they may be getting ready to kill this thing. I don't know. I just don't trust these two now playing, holding on to them throughout the day. I just don't anymore. Um, because like I said, they won't really return like these right here this is this getting returned they're getting out of these ones already that's that's the, that shit getting returned already um so then they'll be able to just short the fuck out of it throughout the rest of the day if they want to if they choose to um i still haven't really got to see the effects of the cat system in 005 i just really think 005 is going to narrow the scope for the usual suspects that short and they're just going to have a smaller window that they short to instead of, you know, like it being at 50 bucks and then they short it down to 38 in one fucking day in one move. I don't think we're going to see that stuff anymore. It'll maybe like a $5, maybe $6 move. Um, actually, you know, pretty much what happened to AMC today. Exactly what happened to it. <clears throat> and I don't know, this may have been, again, dark pool fucking trades catching up because there wasn't a whole lot of like shorting and shit in the after hours in the pre-market or any of that wasn't even much shorting yesterday so maybe they figured they'd let it just run because they know that this is coming they fucking know and then they immediately use a bunch of shorts to counteract every bit of that wait for it to run up they know where it's going to top out and then just crush it from there crush it again crush it again so they become very dangerous plays to like hold options wise, unless you are just way, way out and you got in at a very good, good price. But, um, yeah, that's where I'm sitting on that shit right now. And anybody that is dicking around with Bitcoin and shit, um, <laughs> good luck to you. I mean that seriously. Good, good, good luck to you. Um, <laughs> I just don't want no parts of it. Hey, bitch, you're taking me all the way back here. All the way back here. That's where I want to be.
Yeah, I just... This is very reminiscent of April and May. Very much so. So I'm probably going to do a lot more watching here. I don't think I'm going to be actively trading much in the next week or two. I'm going to just try to refresh all of my day trades and try to pick my battles. Um, really, really put some eyeballs on, on the market and, uh, you know, make specific plays. It's dangerous to put yourself in multi-play, especially multi-short plays right now. It just is. It's hard to get out of them when you need to get out of them. Um, it's just, yeah. I don't know if any of you are, you know, if you've got 30,000 plus in your account and you can day trade, you should be making a fucking killing. If you, <laughs> if you follow my educational instruction on how I would literally, if I had all the day trades in the world, trade these fucking things, you should be making a killing in short squeeze plays right now. Um, you, I mean, because you can buy all the puts you want, all the calls you want. I mean, you can make money both ways all fucking day. You should be making so much money. Um, but this is this is like the type of shit that I look for here. You know, you had it went from like where was it at? Yeah, you know, about fifty three. And then went down to like 51.5. Then went down to 55. And then tanked. And that's the type of shit I'd be looking for. I would be setting notifications if I was still trading in cryptos for these percentage moves. And if they happened, you know, within whatever that is, a two hour frame, hour and a half frame that same percentage drop, I'd probably just get out and hold and see which way it plans on going. Because um, this is exactly what it fucking did. Exactly what it did before. And now you're down under... Oh man, that's just so ugly. This just really is. This shit's ugly. Where did that go to? About 45.8. Yeah, I mean, just be smart about it. So this is exactly what it did last time. It went down and then went up about half of its loss and then went down, you know, uh, about half of that and then back up about half of that and then down half of that and then up half of that and then pff, crashed again. Um, this does not look like a recovery or anything that is recovering. Um, looks like it's setting up to kathunk again. But I, who knows? I, I could very easily be wrong on that. No one knows when these fuckers are going to push buy buttons and sell buttons. But, you know, if I see a percentage drop very similar to what you saw prior to the first big dip, <clears throat> I personally, just me, would pull out and sit and watch. And then, you know, if it, if it starts trending back up again, I'd get back in. But hopefully that just gives you the ability to avoid a... You see how it's like, you know, went down about, where was this, 45 and something, yeah, 45 and a half, so it went from like 47 down to 44, 47 and a half to 44 and a half, and then came back up about half, and uh, now it's sitting where, 46, it may get to like 46.3, 46.5, and then it either tank or go back down to... What's in between 45? Maybe go like straight to 45.9 or 45.6 um, or 46 flat and then may make a break to the downside. I don't know, you guys. Just be very careful with crypto right now. That's all I'm saying because I've been watching it for a long time. I've only seen this happen one other time. That was back in May. These, again, are obviously following each other. Someone has massive control over this. Um... So just be careful with them. 
but that's what I got for you guys today. Uh, I'm very busy because I have finals and shit, so, so that's why you can get a video this morning. I got to study, um, but you know, I'm uh, still going to make videos. I'm still going to talk about what I can talk about and what I see, but I don't think I'm going to really actively be trading much this week and probably not until sometime next week. I'm going to try to refresh all my day trades heading into this now. Because I think that we are in for a, in the coming weeks, <clears throat> I think we may see a big move. Um, and I just want to be able to capitalize on it where I can. Um, I do not have a lot of money. I just paid rent. Thank God for Eric. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much, sir. For real. My God, thank you. So that way I could, you know, pretty much keep my portfolio. It usually stays in between you know, a thousand and two thousand dollars and that's basically what it takes for me to have throughout the month to make money and pay my bills. So thank you very, very much, sir. Like you fucking saved my life. I have no idea. Um but yeah guys just be careful. Be just be careful with everything. We got the cat system, we got zero zero five um all taking place now. I think the cat fully, fully, fully takes place tomorrow. I know they're decommissioning the oat system. Um, and it's going to take a minute, you know, and maybe a week or so to really see what effect, if any, it's going to have. Like I said, I think it's really going to narrow the scope of shorting. Like you're not going to see 50 to fucking 39 like you usually do. I think it's going to be more of a $5 window, kind of like this from 50 down to 45 ish, uh, this type of narrow window gap. Um, but it should be easier to predict as time goes on. Um, but if this is the beginning of the crash, like it did in April, um, yeah, May and June, September, October, November, that would actually be almost right on par with the pattern. Um, we'll see. We shall see. So a little earlier, it's a few weeks ahead of its normal schedule. Well, it's original crash, <laughs> so it's not really on a schedule yet. It's not really on a cycle yet. This would be indicative of a new cycle for cryptos and what's going on in the market. But um, there's a lot of shit that also got delayed uh, because no one knows what the fuck's going on. And apparently uh, I misheard what I thought about the debt ceiling being raised and the debt ceiling wasn't raised. It was just delayed um, instead of making the decision that day to or not to, it was pushed out and that still needs to be a decision that is made. Um, but they've delayed a lot of the shit they were putting in place to mitigate and be a safety net for an economic collapse. Um, and, uh, and should, you know, America's economy default by not raising the debt ceiling. Uh, all that's gotten delayed till like October, November. And that literally with the Bitcoin crash, that is exactly where I would see a big move coming if it follows the pattern. If I can call what it did uh, at the mid end of April through May and then into June, um, you know, that would mean that we've got a couple weeks in this month. And then shit will start turning around by the end of this month, beginning of October, and then look really, really good throughout October, and then somewhere around uh, either the end of October or mid-November or something like that maybe would have a, a nice size move. But could come before that again, so I'm just going to chill and I'm going to watch and see what, what effect these things are having on the market as a whole. And if I see any sort of nice big move going on everywhere, then maybe I will burn a day trade on something. But these guys are, uh, they're fighting hard. They're going to have to, you know, they don't have their discretionary shorting ability. So it's got to be more strategic, which I think is why you are seeing a lot more shorting that's happening during the day getting returned in the hours where it won't affect you you won't get to benefit from it really unless you are locked loaded and ready to get out right at the beginning of the day um yeah you guys be safe and be smart and invest intelligently i think this shit's gonna get wild um 
yeah, so just remember, you know, if you're in a short squeeze play, like a legitimate one that has all of the components it needs, including retail there. Uh, if you're if, a, if you're freely able to day trade because you've got you know twenty five thirty thousand dollars in your account, like I said, you should that should be growing exponentially if you're trading the way that you should be uh, in these short squeeze plays. <laughs> like I said, you just make money every way, up, down, sideways, all that shit. Um, if you poe like me, then you need to really be picky and really be choosy, kind of follow the trend. Uh, you know, if it's if it's heading down at the end of the day, typically it, you'll usually see a nice influx in the morning for all of the meme stocks, shorted stocks. Um, but, you know, it's when you start seeing a lot of shit returned in the after hours in the pre-market, you can assume that maybe you'll get a little bump in the morning, but it's probably going to be super duper shorted shortly after that bell, if not immediately when that bell opens. Um, the market so take it slow that's what I'm doing I'm, I'm taking it slow the rest of this week and into next week so um, yeah I'll make another video here later I, just, I got a lot of fucking school works I got to do so I'm out